This video will be a continuation in our series on connective tissues, and this video will cover hyaline cartilage in specific, which brings us into a new category of connective tissues, that of cartilages. So before we tackle cartilages, let's remember our unifying characteristics of connective tissues. All of our connective tissues are going to have a mesenchymal origin, which means that they have mesenchymal stem cells. And all of our connective tissues have two major components, cells and extracellular matrix. Our extracellular matrix can be divided into two major categories. Our ground substance is the fluid component of our extracellular matrix and our extracellular fibers, of which we have three different kinds. Our collagen fibers are going to provide strength in one direction. Our elastic fibers provide stretch and recoil. And our reticular fibers create a branching framework that provides strength in many directions. So our collagen fibers generally stain pink our elastic fibers generally stain dark purple, and our reticular fibers will stain either a dark brown black or light blue. So let's dive in to cartilage and talk about our hyaline cartilage. When we look at cartilage, we are going to have some unifying characteristics. All cartilage is surrounded by a perichondrium, which is a dense irregular connective tissue covering. And we can see a little bit of our perichondrium on these sides here. Next, when we look at cartilage, we are always going to see lacunae. With an E on it, lacunae is plural, and if that E were not there, it would just be lacuna, and that is singular. Lacunae are spaces within the cartilage that house our specialized cell type, which is a chondrocyte. So the word lacuna means house, and in our cartilage, we are going to see spaces, and inside of those spaces, we will see chondrocytes. So our lacuna is the structure, and the cell is our chondrocyte. And our lacuna end up looking like googly eyes whenever they have chondrocytes in them because you can see the cell and the nucleus in that chondrocyte. So we have lots of little lacuna, these spaces filled with purple dots. Those purple dots are our chondrocytes. And the space is our lacuna. So there's our general description for cartilage. How about a general description for hyaline cartilage specifically? All right, we're going to see those lacunae. So our lacunae always house our chondrocytes. But in between our lacunae, our matrix is going to be kind of stiff and gel-like. And this gel-like matrix is going to have a smooth, glassy appearance. I think it looks like watercolor, where all of our colors have smudged together. This smudged appearance is going to help us distinguish between hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibrous cartilage. So if we look at our picture, we can see that there's darker spots, but if we could draw this in with a pencil and then smudge it with our finger, we would get this smudged, smooth, glassy appearance in between our lacunae. So whenever we see lacuna, you need to think cartilage. Whenever you see this smooth watercolor matrix, you need to think hyaline cartilage. We have already covered our specialized cell type, chondrocytes. The word chondro means cartilage, and then site means cell. 
And in order to get that smooth gel-like matrix, we need to have a specialized fiber type. Well, what colors do you see here? Here you see a little bit of pink, here you see a little bit of darker purple, and then in between it's sort of this light purple color. Well, we get that by mixing two different fiber types. Our collagen is going to be pink, and our elastic fibers are going to be purple. So we have two specialized fiber types, and unlike areolar tissue, I can't point to a specific fiber and have you distinguish between them because it's all smudged together. So I'll just ask for the specialized fiber type and you can give me either collagen or elastic fibers. Now let's talk locations. Hyaline cartilage is fairly widespread throughout your body and we have it in many different locations. A great place to find hyaline cartilage is when we're developing all of our fetal bones are made out of hyaline cartilage. Because they're not actually bone yet, they're cartilage, we call them bone models. So fetal bone models are made out of hyaline cartilage, and then when we make our bone, we have a little bit of cartilage left over on the tips of our long bones, and we call that articular cartilage. We also have a little bit left over that makes up our epiphyseal plates. We have hyaline cartilage holding open our trachea and bronchi, forming rings that hold our airways open. We see hyaline cartilage on the tip of our nose. So I want everyone to grab the tip of your nose. It's kind of bendy, but it's not super bendy. It's not as bendy as, say, your ear. But you can wiggle the end of your nose. That's hyaline cartilage, so it's a little bit flexible. And we also see hyaline cartilage as our costal cartilages connecting our ribs to our sternum. So I want everyone to take a big deep breath. Now blow it out. Your rib cage changed size. So our hyaline cartilage gives our rib cage that flexibility to increase its volume and decrease its volume. So in our locations, we can assign functions. As fetal bone models, well, we're acting as a model, and it's going to be replaced by bone. Let's take a look at the articular cartilage on our long bones. In that area of our body, hyaline cartilage is going to provide a smooth, slippery surface that allow our bones to move past each other without friction. So our articular cartilage is going to be a portion of our joint that reduces friction and provides a little bit of cushioning as we move our joints. Then if we look at our trachea and bronchi, our hyaline cartilage is going to serve to keep our airways open. So we're going to support our airways. And then if we take a look at the tip of our nose and costal cartilages, we are going to provide a structure that allows for a little bit of flexibility, but not huge amounts of flexibility. So we are going to say flexible support. That sums it up for our functions. Let's take a closer look at our hyaline cartilage. Here, our summary slide is telling us everything that we saw on our previous slide, but I want to get a little bit closer still. Here's a nice close-up. So we see our lacunae highlighted in orange. Those are both lacunae creating spaces in our bones, and some of our lacunae are empty because this slice that we see on our slide just did not happen to catch our chondrocytes inside of our lacunae. But in many of them, we have a lacuna, and we have a chondrocyte within the lacuna. So here we've got a chondrocyte surrounded by lacuna. So again, the lacuna is the structure and the cell is our chondrocyte. Now let's look at a couple of different pictures. 
Here we see hyaline cartilage. We can see our perichondrium on either side of our hyaline cartilage. This happens to be a cross section of a tracheal ring. And we can see that we've got a little bit of pink in our matrix. We've got a little bit of purple in our matrix. But again, it looks like a watercolor and all of our colors are smudged together. In this picture, we see a little bit more pink than we saw in our previous pictures, but again, you don't see distinct fibers, and all of our colors are smudged together. We also see lacunae very clearly, and they are housing chondrocytes inside of our lacuna. And we've got lots of them, so we've got tons of googly eyes in this picture. Here again, we see lots of pink, but our matrix is very smudged together, so we're not seeing individual fibers. Instead, we have that smudgy appearance. We do see our lacunae housing our chondrocytes. And finally, one more picture. So you can see we have a huge range of colors here. So we've got very dark purple, we've got very light pink, we've got a brighter pink, I don't even know what you call this color here, and then in our picture we've got that sort of gray purple over there. But in all of these pictures we have a smudgy matrix where we're not seeing individual fibers. That wraps it up for hyaline cartilage. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.